good day and uh, welcome to the phono cave uh, I comment I commented on uh, uh, Thomas Johnson's antique restorations channel uh, about uh, using uh, well pretty much store-bought stuff to uh, restore uh, a cabinet that he found in a barn and uh, I commented under it and I said you know if you do uh, wood restoration for a long time you uh, at a certain point in time you start to make your own because it's it's cheaper uh, you can get more of the stuff so you it's a cheaper and you will have more of it and he replied and said you know you should make a video of it uh, so that you can show people uh, how that is done and even though you know I have enough of the stuff to uh, last me half a lifetime so I have to get some stuff to uh, get that realized on videos to make it in a, a small portions uh, but what I do have going at the moment is uh, is dye made from uh, walnut husks and you can make a walnut husk dye two ways. One is the easy way, which is A, easy, and it doesn't take very long. And that way goes, uh, you take some walnut husks, preferably the, the brown and, uh, you know, uh, the brown ones that uh, taint your fingers uh, brown. Uh, you take a lot of them, you throw them in a in, in pan, uh, you throw water with it, uh, boil it, sift it, and then you've got, the, you've got your dye. That's one way. The other way is take green walnut husks, uh, put them in a uh, pot like this, and let them ferment for a long time until the 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 husks uh well rot away and the only uh, thing that you have left is is a pulp uh i don't know if i have a stick laying around uh, no no uh, not not at the moment but what is in this pot is the is the pulp that is left and you see uh, there's mold on it doesn't matter doesn't matter it doesn't affect the dye if you have uh, it made from brown husks that are boiled and you get mold the dye gets affected it gets diluted this by the way still needs to be boiled down to about this level to be kind of an effective dye and this pulp can be uh, uh, re-fermented and then you get more dye from it so not only do I get a pot like this from a pot like this if I let it ferment for uh, a longer time like I've been doing here I get another pot like this and then I can redo it again and what the dye is is particles from the walnut husk but the particles need to be small enough to be effective to dye uh, wood or paper or anything. And what you do with fermenting is that you make those particles that are left smaller and smaller and smaller until the un a certain point the only thing that you're left with are the skins. <laughs> and there's no more dye to be had from that. So this, this goo, moldy goo, can last you for years well this dye is uh, still rather thin like I said I need to boil it down uh, to, a, to a certain thickness but let's try to do something with it I just pour this dirty cloth in in a dye, make it good and wet, and 
Nah, it's not very effective, but I think if you do uh, several uh, layers of that, although it's several layers of that uh, several times with this uh, diluted dye, then yeah, it will uh, stain quite a bit. Like I said, this dye isn't uh, good enough yet, but it gives you a bit of an example. And by the way, for staining cloth, it's already perfect, but I don't know why you should want to stain cloth uh, with it, because uh, the only thing you get is uh, the only thing you get is brown cloth. Can you see that? Yeah. So it colors, it dyes, but like I said, as it is, it's not very effective yet. It needs to be uh, boiled down. And the thing about it being fermented is that the, the stuff that bacteria like to break the stuff down that you normally have with the normal boiled uh, uh, walnut husk dye is that isn't in there so you have a dye that will last for years in fact this pot as it is has been standing uh, on a shelf for about three years and as you can see it Nope. There's not a spot of mold on it. Would that have been a normal, regular, uh, boiled walnut house guy? It would have been mold fast. <laughs> and this is in pretty good order. And even though there, there's a seal on there, it is slowly going down. And also, on the bottom, there's still a bit of remnants of the uh, you know things have gone out of solution a bit and if you stir that up then you probably will have a stronger dye as well because it's the same you know you have certain paints and then the the, the color material sinks out of solution but you know when you stir it it goes back into solution it's fairly very same thing so you know that's the way to, to make walnut husk dye the hard way. If you look at this pot, you see those those dark things in there. Those are the, the, the skins. And you know, as you can see, you know, th th this has no uh, structure anymore at all. And if you throw them in to ferment, the walnut husks, again, I say it again, must be green not brown green because the green walnut husk has more sugar in it for the uh, uh, to make it ferment and strangely enough the peel that's why the peel is in there uh, has uh, the bacterians you know that make it ferment just like you put grapes in a barrel and you stamp them and they will ferment it to wine. It's the very same thing. The, the stuff to make them ferment is already in them. You don't need extra, uh, for instance, like you do with, uh, uh, with beer. So, basically, uh, this is... Uh, I wouldn't recommend drinking it, but basically this is uh, a yeah, very low alcohol... Uh, walnut husk wine <coughs> I don't think it's very healthy for you to drink but you know, probably you won't die of it there are not any uh, bad chemicals in there <laughs> but anyway I think that's pretty much all that I needed to say about it and uh, I hope you like it like and subscribe click the little bell icon and I will see you the ne again the next time goodbye <laughs>